Hello and welcome to my oh so spooky Halloween video. Haha. <laughs> now nothing nothing scary in the voiceover. Unless I decide there is. Ooh, you never know. Oh, I could be playing a trick on you. But no. <laughs> No, um, welcome to my Halloween build for this year. I'm very excited to share this. I've called this house Halloween Mansion. I don't know if this qualifies as a mansion. I don't care. I'm bad at naming builds, and this is what you're going to get. So yes, as I've just stated, I have a Halloween build. This is a three-bedroom, three-bathroom build that's about 150k. Uses about a million packs, as per usual. I kind of just do whatever I want. This one also has a, a smidge of um, custom content, so... If you're down with that, cool. If you're not, um, there was a couple of items that I used that were like actual functional items. Like one of the beds is CC and I think that's it. Oh, and the fireplace. There was a fireplace in this build and no chimney because I was not feeling chimney. <laughs> but yeah, a couple of things are CC. Um, you can replace them. You, the, the game will function fine without them. They're, they're, yeah, they're nothing special. Anyway, uh, yes, this build, this has been, um, quite the experience to build. Like, the building process itself was a little arduous, just in the sense that, like, I was very, I did a lot of stopping and starting, and, like, I restarted this several times, so this is the final version of everything you're seeing. I'm not including any of the previous attempts, because those are mostly the nail down the shape, and the color scheme, and, like, ideas about the furnishing, and another thing I did a lot was I just, like, made notes about what am I going to do, what colors am I going to use. I have, like, a notebook with, like, the specific items in game and, like, a blueprint of the whole place just to make sure I know what I'm doing and I'm not just, like, bumbling around on camera because I hate doing that and I feel like it just makes these videos really long and annoying to watch. Anyway, who lives in this build? I'm glad you asked uh, me from the past or future or whatever is going on. I don't know. Do you? I don't think so, because I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. Anyway, <laughs> who lives in this build? I made this for, I was thinking there's two options. So the first option, which is like the more conventional option, I think, is you have a group of spellcasters who are a family, a family of spellcasters, if you will, who all live in this house together. So it's, um, it's three bedrooms. One is very clearly the master bedroom, and then there's two other bedrooms um, that look a lot more youthful. The other option I was thinking, sorry if you heard me about my desk, the other option I was thinking is that it is for a spellcaster and two apprentices, which is something I really like doing in my personal gameplay, and I think is really great for, like, storytelling. Um, so in a household I'm currently playing, like, just on my own every now and then, I have a spellcaster, and she has this random child living in the house who was an apprentice, in my eyes. So... <laughs> We have, like, this random kid who just lives with this adult that he's not related to, but is, like, legally responsible for him. It's a vibe. It's very fun. Um, they're an interesting household. But, yeah, so that was what I was thinking in terms of Sims. Like, this kid sleep three to five Sims. Um, and then there's an attic that I end up using as, like, a laboratory for potions. You could totally make that into a bedroom if you would rather have that be sleeping space to have even more Sims here. Um, and then I also have stuff for a cat. So there's, like, a litter box, food bowl um cat tree is there no there's not a cat tree there's um a scratching post and then like some toys and stuff um so you could have that um I was thinking even though you can't have sims have pet birds um there's like bird vibes in here so one of the bedrooms has a lot of bird stuff um I totally could put more, more bird stuff but I was like this is enough bird stuff we can just have some some peacocks and phoenixes in this house you know bird things but yes so aside from the who um the what as in what is in this house um as I mentioned, there are three floors. There is the ground floor, the um, second story, and then the attic space. Um, I start working on the ground floor first after I finish the exterior, because this is one of the few times where I was like, we're going to figure out what the exterior looks like before we get too ahead of ourselves, because that's where I kept running into trouble earlier. It was like, I didn't know what I wanted to do with like the exterior, and I was like, well, I'm stuck now. So I decided to do that first this time, and I really like how it turned out. But yes. So downstairs is living, kitchen, dining, you know, the usual. There's a bed, there's a bathroom down there as well. And then upstairs is all the bedrooms and two bathrooms. And then I mentioned earlier, there's a potion space in the attic and also a secret other room that uh, you'll see when we get there. It's not a secret, but it's a fun room. <laughs> anyway, um, one of the things I really wanted to do with this was keep to like the sort of darker, more not whimsical, but I guess whimsical color scheme. So that was um, the wood tones I was using for like the doors and the pillars. 
and then having a different wood tone for the windows because I really wanted like these black windows against this brown siding. I think that turned out really nice and kind of moody. Um, it was also kind of difficult to do because for the life of me, it is so hard to find windows that are the same color inside and outside that also fit for like a Victorian style, which is really what I was attempting to do with this. But I found them. Um, filtering by color and by architectural style was so helpful and I'm really glad I was able to do that. But yeah. Um, and then on the inside for the wallpapers, I just had fun with it. I used several different packs, Realm of Magic, um, Cottage Living, Base Game, just really whatever came to mind. I wasn't limiting myself at all with this. I was just saying, have fun with it. Um, and I did. I had a lot of fun with it. So I hope you also have fun with it if you download this or if you're just here to watch, which I don't blame you. That's what I do with speed builds as well. Anyway, I have some notes. Um, I've gotten through my first bullet point about who lives here. My second is, what are the vibes? Today, I am recording this on the 31st. Um, I tried to record this voiceover before, and I decided I didn't like my recording, so I'm recording it again. <laughs> but yes, so it is the 31st. Um, I am not going out tonight. I'm going to stay in, make dinner, and watch over the garden wall, because I've decided it's that time of year. Also, <laughs> I was at work earlier, and um, someone I work, um, someone who works down the hall from me, she had like, she had like a little, a little work costume. She she basically knit, or did she knit it or crochet? I think she knit it. She knit like a little um, upside down teapot to wear on her head, and she had like the frog taped to her sweater. And I was like, that's amazing. <laughs> but no, it was it was very fun. Um, I think some people did dress up a little bit. I live um. If you weren't aware, I work on a college campus and I see a lot of college students. So <clears throat> there were some people dressed up, like some people passed by me while I was walking home wearing so like little costumes and stuff. Uh, people didn't really dress up that much at work, uh, which I mean makes sense because my supervisor, um, she has two young kids. So she probably wasn't thinking, oh, I'm going to dress up and do that. And then, um, the other person working in my lab, she's not from the U S so she's never really celebrated Halloween as in like, <laughs> I had to teach her how to carve a pumpkin, um, last week, which was a lot of fun. We had, um, some of the labs where I work, we had like a little Halloween party where we were doing preliminaries for the pumpkin derby. Now, you may or may not know what a pumpkin derby is, but I'm going to explain just in case. Basically, someone built a ramp out of plywood and set up two lanes with like a stop, you know, how they have on like bike races. Like they have a stop at the top. Um, you put your pumpkins in the stop and then someone yells go and there's like a lever to let the stops go and let the two pumpkins roll down the ramp. Now, you can't like smooth out your pumpkins to make them roll better. You can't do anything like that. There was a weight limit to the pumpkins as well. So basically, you're rolling two pumpkins down a ramp to see which one gets to the bottom and hits the hay bale first. And it was some of the most intense fun I have had in a long time. It was it was great. Also, there was like music and snacks and a massive crowd. There was like we did it outside in like this lower kind of courtyard area. And there's like um, a bridge above. There were like people leaning on the bridge watching to see what was happening with the pumpkin race. It was so fun. Um, but yeah, so at the little Halloween party just for like the three labs, my lab and two other labs that we all like work together. Um, we had some preliminary races to see like who the pumpkin champion was. And so that champion pumpkin did race. Um, not from my lab. I ended up carving that pumpkin, unfortunately, um, which is really tragic because my lab's pumpkin, we lost in like the first bracket. But you know what? It's fine. Uh, we're winners in our hearts and we made a cute pumpkin with a frog on it. So I don't care. But yeah, that's been an exciting, exciting thing I've done. Um, <laughs> I haven't really done much else. Um, oh, I know what I did. And also, I'm sorry for saying um so much. I'm very you know, not the best at speaking, but I'm trying to get better. Um, <laughs> I did it again. Oh, no. So on Saturday, this past Saturday, the 28th, 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 I attended a charity live stream. Um, I'm doing it again. So the charity live stream was for Extra Life, which is basically people will live stream themselves playing video games and the viewers can donate, at least in the case of this stream, the viewers can donate to determine which games are played during the live stream. So I went to that stream, I donated, the game I donated for didn't end up getting played while I was there, which is fine. 
it's fine because the other games played were absolutely wild in the best ways. Um, some games included a game of Mario Party 4 that had been started at this event three years prior. And luckily all the people who were playing that game three years prior were present. So they got to finish their game of Mario Party with a slightly broken GameCube. This was a GameCube Wii and Wii U library. So for context. There was Odama, which is basically pinball with feudal Japanese military conquests. It's one of the most ridiculous games I've ever seen, but it was a lot of fun. So there was an, an interesting mix of games. Oh, the, the one I forgot. For $5,000, someone donated to have this like laser disc FMV game where you're like a cowboy in the Old West. I forget what it was called, but it was amazing because it's you know a game from the 90s for fmv so there's no interface there's no instructions or anything but it was ported to gamecube you just have to read the instruction manual and know what you're doing so again i had i had a great time this past weekend uh that was my saturday i spent 10 hours at that live stream sunday i went to staples you know adult things i bought highlighters i now own highlighters that's exciting um also, I've been completely neglecting talking about this build I've been doing. So as you just saw, I decorated the front and a bit of the back, mostly the front, with like some nice little Halloween decor. Uh, I wanted to kind of encapsulate the feeling of a nicely decorated house ready to receive trick-or-treaters because growing up, we would decorate the front yard. We would decorate really just the front of the house. We never did anything in the back. I think the most we did was <laughs> in November, we would take all of our old pumpkins and then just throw them against the trees at the back of my yard. <laughs> But I wanted to make this um, thoroughly decorated, but not overly decorated. So I was just kind of borrowing from houses I would visit as a kid. Usually there would be some sort of like rocking chair set up uh, with a skeleton. I didn't put any skeletons in this build except for like some paper lanterns. So I put that pumpkin with a little hat because I thought that was really cute. I had I have two candy bowls on this build, um, one inside, one outside. They should both be functional, but I know the, the one inside is definitely functional because my tester sim, uh, she took a piece of candy. And apparently when your sim takes a piece of candy, they get scared by a ghost. It's so cute. <laughs> so I have that. I have a bunch of pumpkins outside. Uh, I had a lot of fun picking out pumpkins and different colors of pumpkins um, for this build. I don't do any pumpkins in the backyard, but I have some in the living room and in the kitchen and the dining room. I also, I'll say I didn't do a ton of, like, Halloween decorations for the upstairs because I, in my experience, I've only decorated my front yard and, like, the very front of the house growing up. That's as much Halloween decoration as we would do. Um, so I just kind of wanted to carry that through my build because I like to build what I know, which is either builds based on reality, builds based on other builds I've seen, or just whatever comes to my head and will not leave me alone. Anyway, I'm finally moving on to like the main living spaces on the interior. I picked out some curtains ahead of time and then kind of like second guess myself. Same with the couches. All of this you see, like there's no way I was gonna do this in real time on this build for a build this big. I did not have the confidence to not make this um, video like five hours long. So I didn't, it's only half an hour, which is still kind of long, but hey, we're almost halfway done. <laughs> So this main sitting room, I wanted it to have a certain darkness to it, hence why I picked out the wallpaper and the, the couches and the rug and whatnot. Um, but at the same time, I still wanted there to be like a little bit of whimsy, which is why I brought in the plants and I brought in some other items that you're going to see in this. But ultimately, I wanted it to be a nice room, a room to receive. I also wanted this whole house to be kind of low tech. So there's no television. The only computer is a typewriter kind of stuff oh also i put a knight statue so my idea with the knight statue is whenever i make some sort of fantastical build i like to pretend that the knight statues are security so let's say someone breaks into your house and you're upstairs like you you wake up in the middle of the night and someone's in your house downstairs snooping around that's bad but you know who you have to help you instead of you going down to deal with the intruder that's right your knight statue obviously that doesn't work in the game um but i think it'd be really funny if it did um that would be yeah, that would just be really weird and hilarious and probably make the night statue cost another $10,000. But you know what? That's the price of a home security system, I guess. Uh, and home security, let's face it, is priceless. So 
I also put up a, <laughs> that was a weird rant to go on, but <clears throat> I put up a bunch of like streamers and bunting and those cards above the doors as well, because I didn't want this to just be like a house with a couple pumpkins. I really wanted to like have the Halloween of this house kind of live and breathe, at least through the downstairs and certain other rooms that you would have guests in. Because as I mentioned before, obviously you're not necessarily going to decorate your bedroom to be super high holiday vibes so I didn't do that because again to me it just isn't super realistic uh, another way that I decorated this build was with the familiar orbs that came from with magic since I imagine there were spellcasters living here that was like the idea from the beginning um, I wanted to have these fantastical magical elements and I did that in the form of as I just said the familiar orbs so I put one in the curio case I put one by the door. I put them in several of the bedrooms upstairs. I think they're a really nice decorative item, and I also think that they're really good for environmental storytelling about the sims you have in the build. So that's why I do stuff like that. And then we're onto the dining room. I think I made a bold choice with the orange chairs here, because I don't think there's really any other build where I would say, yeah, orange chairs, let's go. But Halloween, orange. So I said, let's do orange. And I kind of like it. I think it's cute. I think it's very pumpkin-y. It's very, it's very pumpkin core. And yeah, I just like how it turned out. And I also reinforced that orange with um, the pumpkins on the china cabinet. I have more of an orange wood tone in the doors and also kind of in that china cabinet. It's, I think of it as like Rottweiler colors where it's like black and brown, but like the brown's kind of like a reddish brown. And I also, again, I have just pumpkins all over the place. It's pumpkin season. It's spooky season. Let's get spooky. So uh, for the dining room, again, I just didn't want it to be super like unusably busy, but I also wanted it to be sufficiently Halloween colored. So this is something that apparently people have very strong feelings about is what are the Halloween colors? I was watching a video recently and someone was saying black and orange is like classic canonical. Orange and purple is good for lights because you can't really have black for lighting. It doesn't quite work in an additive medium like that but orange purple and green is like modern halloween lighting which is i guess i've always thought of orange purple green as like always being halloween lighting because you have the orange of pumpkins the purple is like kind of a witchy color i think of it and then the green is for like monsters and then if you're doing like solid items with subtractive color medium you would have orange, black, and white, because white for me is like ghosts and bones, and then orange is for darkness, and or orange is for pumpkins, and then black is for darkness. So I think it's kind of interesting how people interpret the same holiday differently in a color sense. But yeah, that's kind of that or that kind of idea of those colors. Even before I had like seen that video talking about it, <laughs> which is just like a random video I happened across. My idea for like those Halloween colors, you kind of see throughout the design of the house, not so much in the physical items, but in the lighting. So for basically every sconce and lantern and pumpkin and whatnot, I made sure there was really strong like themed lighting. And I especially did that with the ghosts outside. They're all very brightly colored and I think they're adorable. <laughs> but yeah, so I wanted to do that for especially the spaces where you'd be receiving guests, that being the living room and the dining room and also the front hall. and. I do that to a lesser extent in one of the bathrooms, the one in the kitchen, but the kitchen itself, I keep fairly down to earth in terms of like the lighting and whatnot. However, the de <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've been talking for a while. <laughs> However, the decorations themselves, I do lean more towards just a general autumnal feel rather than like the goofy, scary godmother Halloween feel. Speaking of which, scary godmother, that was one of the vibes I had when I was like plotting this out to build this. But confession, I have not watched Scary Godmother in so long. I don't remember what happens in that movie. So I can't claim Scary Godmother for this build. However, I've been watching other movies lately. Um, I watched The Babadook last night. And it's a bit of an older movie in the sense that it came out five, six years ago. Uh, I quite like it. It was good. It was really good. Um, it's scary. It's So if you're not familiar with it and you're interested in horror movies... It's about this woman who has like a six year old son who her son is like has severe behavioral issues and it puts like, you know, puts a huge stress on her because her son's kind of a menace. Her husband's passed away. Um, she's working to support both of them. It's like a whole thing. No one in her life offers her any support, particularly her sister, but whatever. That's 
if you watch the movie, you'll, you'll get it. So in the movie, the woman is like reading her song, a bedtime story. And he selects this book that neither of them know how it got there, but it's called Mr. Babadook. And she reads it to him, terrifies the kid, but she's like, I'm going to keep reading this. And basically by reading the book, it unleashes this monster called the Babadook who essentially makes them both go insane. Uh, I won't get too into it because I think it's a, it's a fairly good movie. Uh, yeah. Watch it, please. It was, it was really fun. Uh, I, I should have watched it way, way longer ago. I just haven't had the opportunity because it's on a streaming service that I didn't have until recently. And also I always have a harder time carving out time for a whole movie rather than for a few episodes of a TV show for whatever reason. And even with TV shows, I can just watch one episode for half an hour and not have to commit to like, this movie was almost two hours long. So I don't have to commit to something like that. But at the same time, I used to be a fan of Sherlock on the BBC and uh, Sherlock episodes were incredibly long. And at the same time, I also really like Midsummer Murders. And episodes of Midsummer Murders are like the length of a feature film. Like that was a huge thing that the actors have talked about in like behind the scenes. It's like, yeah, we're going out to like shoot a whole film on location. Um, and like one of the actors is like, yeah, the reason I stopped being on the show is because my wife was like, I never see you, <laughs> and which is like totally fair. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so I've been watching some more movies lately, which has been really exciting. I also went to a film festival, which is like, <laughs> I was going to talk about that forever ago, and I was planning on, like, making reviews of the movies I saw. Um, I have one completely written, more or less, that I might still share, because, like, the movie was really good, and I think it's worth talking about. It was a good, it was a really good movie. It's called Anatomy of a Fall. It's a French movie. Um, but, yeah, so I went to a film festival, like, so long ago, a month, a month and a half ago at this point, and it was really fun to, like, watch movies again, because I haven't been watching a ton of movies lately ever since I started this job and I moved and whatnot and also since I left college because so something that my friends and I would do is we would go to the tv and in like in our dorm and we just watch a random movie also we're gonna sidetrack that for a second while I just did with the curtains I felt so smart for that um basically these curtains they're from high school years I think they're really beautiful but sometimes they project a bit too much from the wall like the curtain rod is just a little further than I'd like it to be so what I did since the curtain rod and the wall since the curtain rod's kind of kind of thick but the walls are kind of thick I put the curtain rod in the wall and so I can have stuff closer to the walls in the room which is just like a weird preference that I have for furniture in real life and in the sims and I only say it's weird because it's not just a preference for furniture. It's just a preference for so many things in like how I coordinate my life is everything must be against the walls, which whenever I say that to people, it doesn't sound weird to them. It feels weird to me, but whatever. Anyway, you're also seeing I'm putting birds here. Uh, yes, I wanted birds in this building. I, we got we got birds in this room because I, I was thinking that like the head spellcaster slash the adults the mortgage payers if you will are bird people so i have the phoenix orb i was gonna also have the raven orb but i ended up getting rid of it because i thought that the phoenix really fit more with the color that i was going for in here which was more of like a fiery autumnal like fierce orange tree but also like fire magic kind of vibe so i was thinking potentially with someone into more of like the untamed magic or like destruction magic kind of vibe it could also be for someone who is more into like conjuring familiars and that sort of magic and also just happens to really like fire <laughs> you never know but yeah I really like how this room turned out it I'm not sure if it's my favorite of the rooms but it is one of my favorite of the bedrooms just because this color scheme is something that I quite like using, that being the red and the gray. I do really like how that turns out. And I don't know, it just, it feels very magical and regal to me in a way that I don't usually explore in my builds, especially just using red in such like a strong context. I feel is something a lot of people are afraid of doing because red is a very strong color and you don't always want strong colors, especially in a space like a bedroom where you would rather have more of a relaxing vibe because you go to a bedroom to relax, to retire, that kind of thing. Anyway, speaking of relaxing and retiring, this room right here, I think is so cool and cozy. Um, I was thinking this was for someone a bit more youthful than the person in the red bedroom. So the blue bedroom is 
if you want to go for like a family, this could be a teenager. Or if you want to go for the idea that I had of like master and apprentice, this could be one of the apprentices who is a bit younger and a bit less experienced with magic and has some different ideas of what they want to do with magic. Maybe they're more into like casting curses on people, or maybe they're more into like divination or conjuration or whatever. I also wanted to put statues of pretty women because I will do that in any build that I can and you can't stop me. <laughs> Uh, but no, so I kind of wanted to have the idea this is someone who is more focused on parts of their appearance, hence why I had the vanity table and the sort of vanity dresser and a, actually a lot of mirrors. So maybe the mirrors could be like part of how they use their magic. And another thing I had kind of strongly in here was the moon, well, moon and flowers. So uh, that painting that I just put up has the moon on it. Um, I have sun designs on the curtains which I mean, oh, close enough. I have a moon rug I end up putting down in just a moment. I don't have like a moon themed or uh, familiar orb for them. I'm sorry, someone just walked outside my room. I don't have anything moon themed in that regard, but I do have the fairy, which I don't know, fairies like the moon maybe. I also give them a marble wand because I was feeling that gives more of like the vibe I was thinking. And then this one has the natural wand and the third bedroom, which I don't, work on until the very very end has the the little stage magician wand because I thought it was cute and that's for someone who's potentially even younger has like a more of a whimsical take on how they perform their magic yeah, and also just like being able to kind of explore different avenues of how magic users express themselves was a really fun thing to do with this build as well something I'm glad I gave myself an opportunity to do because let's face it I don't build enough for like spellcasters it's so fun and I'm always like, nah, not this time. I wanna, I wanna build something more grounded in reality. But like, I gotta get out of my comfort zone. I gotta build more wacky fun things, because <laughs> this was a lot of fun. Anyway, we are now onto the attic, which is like the lab or like the potion room. So for this, I wanted there to be all I knew is I wanted a cauldron. I wanted a big ass cauldron. I wanted the little cauldron, and I put both. So this was my big ass cauldron. I put the little lectern as well because I imagine it's like a stand where you have your notes for your potions so you can like refer to a recipe while you're brewing, which I'm going to be real as someone who works in a lab. I wish I had like a music stand just in my lab to put my lab notes on so I don't have them on my bench or a place I used to work. They had like a magnetic strip of metal above the bench top so I could just like magnetize my protocol or whatever onto there so I didn't have like again a big notebook just sitting on my bench and it was very very nice I quite liked it but our lab currently has these like slide out surfaces just above the drawers where you can use that as extra surface space which is also really nice so we'll do something like that sometimes just to have like notes or a laptop to refer to <laughs> but I kind of wanted to conjure sort of the lab bench vibe as best I could for this very magical build um, because let's face it um, chemistry and sorcery or chemistry and alchemy are basically the same thing just different reagents so <laughs> but now I wanted I wanted to have like this sort of laboratory workspace up here I end up putting a pumpkin carving table at the very end when I remember that pumpkin carving is a thing and I also have a special room for you guessed it a seance room. So I have a seance table here. I have um, really just a seance table, a bunch of paintings and some bookshelves and also like fun paranormal wallpaper because it's a very good wallpaper. I need to use it more because it's, it's so fun and colorful and the rich jewel tones just really do it for me. So I went for more of like a blue and red kind of strong colors. At one point I also have like this very strong purple lighting, but I don't keep it. I kind of wish I kept it because I'm going to be real. It looked really nice. I also put more, you know, pumpkin lights up here. It's like, ooh, spooky. Uh, I don't know. I was, again, I was kind of having fun with this build. I wasn't taking it too seriously, um, but I was trying to make sure that as best I could, it was a full functional build uh, that was like decorated to the standards I would normally hold myself to. The I didn't test the seance room just because I was taking the screenshots and whatnot and I didn't really want to spend too long doing that. I didn't want to accidentally spawn something into the game that would be sort of weird. Yeah, you can see I took away the purple. Um, but yeah, I didn't feel particularly invested in like deep, deep playtesting. So I didn't like, have a sim live here for three days or anything. Um, I just made sure, you know, 
the basics were functional. So here I am doing the little office space I mentioned earlier. Uh, since originally the third bedroom downstairs I was going to make into an office and then I realized there is way more room up here than I originally intended and I don't feel like making a super detailed like potions lab. So instead I did this. And I like this space. I think it's nice. I end up putting a stack of canvases here as well, but there's no like painting equipment in this build. So if that really, really matters to you, one option, you could take those little window bays I have at the very, those, they're kind of like dormers that I have at the top. You could take one of those and turn one of those into a balcony to paint on. Or since I didn't put much stuff in the backyard, you could put an easel out there. And I think that could be a nice way to do like some plein air painting, uh, which is always fun, especially if you have a sim that loves outdoors. Because at least in my experience, they get very, you know, curmudgeonly, not curmudgeonly, upset. <laughs> they get very upset and annoyed if you don't let them go outside, even if they like other outdoor activities. And I don't know, I feel like this is like maybe the best way to like kind of merge the two is have non-electronic activities they can do outside, like painting, because painting will not be destroyed by the rain. Anyway, that's the stack of paintings. I moved those hanging plants, which I'll admit I really liked. Also, one of them, these is uh, one of them is a piece of custom content. The CC creator who made them has removed that CC pack from their like Patreon and whatnot, and it gave me such a headache trying to find it when I was compiling all of the CC for this. So I think I'm just gonna include the file in the download and just say, "Happy Halloween! Here's your gift." <laughs> so yes. Anyway, this is the last bedroom. It is a child's bedroom. I was imagining which is sort of inspired by the child that I've been playing with in my own personal gameplay, who is a, like a witch's apprentice. He has a little bedroom in the attic instead of, you know, on the main floor with other people. <laughs> and so, yeah, I just kind of wanted like the vibe of like, you know, young wizard or like young witch kind of learning, learning the ways of their magic or whatever. And I also, I made this at like 11.30 p.m. And all I could think was, I want this to be done. I am so tired. And really, I was I was exhausted when I was doing this. But I still think it's a cute room. Like, it's, it's very busy. It's a lot of patterns going on. But I think that's appropriate for a child. Because, let's face it, children will just kind of throw patterns together and say it looks good no matter what. And I think that is a fun thing that I'd like to embrace, especially in architectural design. <laughs> and... Yeah, it's it just kind of is what it is. But again, I like it. So I'm happy with the build and I made the build. And if you're not happy with the build, then I'm sorry. Uh, maybe we can work this out. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, I'm in the last bit of this build and I just want to say thank you for watching and sticking around this long. If you're interested in downloading this build, it's available on my website, linked in the description. Uh, Happy Halloween. Have a safe night, a fun night. I know I'll be doing that. Um, feel free to tell me what you're up to tonight or don't. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed and have a nice day.